legislative and judicial functions in the name of Rajana rulers. Even though Rajana institutions in a democratic setting, the reality is that Rajana institutions remain very relevant and actually revived in Nigerian communities to date. The case in point is the role of the Sultanate Council in providing leadership to the Muslim community in Nigeria. For us, in the Northern Emirates, regional institutions and rulers remain very, very relevant until today. This is as a result of their significance in the spread and continued vibrance of Islam to date. Thus, our traditional rulers are expected to be the embodiment of moral, cultural, post Islamic values. Some of the ways in which regional institutions are involved in contemporary governance in Nigeria include conflict resolution, community mobilization for development purposes, and serving as communication bridge between government and the people, maintenance of law and order to intelligence recent development in the Northern Emirates, which has called for urgent concern is the increasing partisanship of the custodian of our key traditional institutions to the extent that an average Northern person can tell the political biases of our, polit of our traditional rulers and our Islamic scholars. While it is not unexpected that as a political animal, our fathers may have their preferences, may the office they occupy demand of them to be highly circumspect and ensure a semblance of neutrality in their dealings as their subject belong to different political parties. Arising from the above, therefore, one can cite some infractions in the evidence in the recent time. By this, I'm referring to aspects of the implementations of the global management and occurrences at UNDP trading grounds and even the prestigious annual IDPU calendar launching to mention a few. My observation is that we have allowed political differences among the elites of the Emirates to work negatively on the way these activities are being handled. At the time of elections, I've also noticed that our traditional and religious leaders openly support and campaign for one political parties or the other. This does not augur well for the credibility of regional institutions because they become vulnerable to political revolution. My concern in all of this is that except our fathers moderate their conduct and remain as the father of all subjects, there is a likelihood of them losing their prestige and institutional credibility. The inherent danger is that not only will the consequences of their partisanship affect their personality, there is also the tendency that original institutions and the value they embody will be negatively impacted. On the way forward, I wish to comment on the present time the selection process of the occupants of regional institutions should be rigorous so that the best among contestants are chosen. Our president, Walo Gwaranamu, for instance, personifies sees this call. He is not just qualified because he's adhered to the throne. His academic and professional credentials also position him to understand the development dynamics of our society and attract local and international reference to the institution he represents. Secondly, it is imperative that our regional rulers surround themselves with capable and sincere advisors and aims. Most often than not, leaders are misled by misinformation and bad advice of the people they rely upon. Thirdly, it is important to involve an innovative financing models that insulate regional institutions from pressures and blackmail from political office holders. And fourthly, all stakeholders should be involved in creating a more secure tenor for regional institutions. The power and authority of our institution need to derive from the people, the staff, 
Ananda from the Tika office owner. Finally, I want to once again congratulate our referred Baruch Maranga 